Okay, so today we're going to do a quick introduction to exponents. Um, we probably already know a lot about exponents, but let's just go over some stuff right now and kind of clear a few things up. Okay, so when we're dealing with exponents, we always have a base and then a power. So, for example, in this number right here, let's start it off by saying 2 to the third power. So, in this case, our base would be the 2. This is our base. And the 3 would be the exponent itself, which is also called a power. You could say 2 to the power 3. You could say 2 with exponent 3. Um, but just remember that 2 is your base and 3 is your power, almost in the same way that if you are dealing with the Statue of Liberty, you are definitely going to have a big base on the bottom and the exponent is going to pretty much be the torch. So in this case, 2 would be your base and the 3 would be the exponent. You wouldn't say that the 3 was the base in this case. So the number floating is never the base. The big number at the bottom underneath the exponent is the base. This is very important to remember. Okay, next thing that we want to remember is that when we're dealing with exponents, so we're going to keep the same example, 2 to the third power. What this is really doing is repeated multiplication. So let me explain what that means. Okay, repeated multiplication. In this case, we've got 2 to the third power, so that means 2 times itself 3 times. So that's repeated multiplication. You're repeatedly multiplying 2 by itself 3 times. And something that we don't often think about is, let's just say we were adding 2. 2 plus 2 plus 2. Well, this is repeated addition. And obviously this has nothing to do with um, exponents. But the reason why I'm showing you this is because 2 plus 2 plus 2 is the same as 2 times 3. And so multiplication is repeated addition. So the multiply sign really means you're going to repeatedly add the first number to, by it, to itself three times. And then the problem above it, 2 to the third power, it means that you're repeatedly going to multiply the first number by itself three times. So that's repeated multiplication. And so that's kind of an interesting comparison between the two. Okay, next thing that I want to mention is that um, when we have something, and let's just stick with the same example for now, 2 to the third power, we just said that this equals 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 um, multiplied by itself 3 times, so 2 to the third power. Now, you could say 2 to the third power, you could also say 2 cubed, so when we have an exponent that is, let's just put an x, let's put a little 3, then this has a nickname which is cubed. If we have an x with a 2 up there, then this thing has a nickname. We could say x squared, but we could we could say x squared, so squared being the nickname, or we could say x to the second power. So these are just a couple of nicknames that, that are very important that we that we know and that we learn. Okay, so something else that I want to mention here is that we've written this number in two ways, but some of you might be asking yourself, well, why don't we just write 8? Because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Well, we can. And in a nutshell, there's three ways that we're writing this number. The first way right here we say is written in exponential, exponential form. The number in the middle is written in factor form and the number right at the end is written in standard because that's pretty much how we would write a number like this standard form so it's very important to know what the question is asking us to do whether we need to write our answer in exponential form or whether we can 
um, write it in factor form or if it just wants the final answer which is usually in standard form. So this is all very very important as well and please do not forget that your exponent or your power is the little three up there. That's your exponent and the big number two is your base so hopefully you remembered that just from the last thing that we just did. Okie dokie. So the next thing that we can look at is when are we going to need these things in, in the real world? So there's a bunch of, of things that we use exponents for. If we're talking about very, very big distances, like the size of planets, the distance around Jupiter, distance to the sun, if we're talking about very, very big distances, we can use exponents and specifically scientific notation, which is using an exponent with the number 10 to make a, a, a very small looking number represent something that's very, very big. And likewise, if we're dealing with something that's very tiny, such as the diameter of an atom of a tiny cell um, or something else very, very small, we can also use scientific notation and exponents to represent those very small things as well. So it's very convenient for us to do that. Something else that you know we start to use exponents for, if we pretend that this is a, a square, it's a very bad square, but let's just say that every side on this square is five centimeters and we're trying to find the area, so the, the uh, amount of surface inside the shape. Well, we've got an area formula, which is A equals LW for a rectangle, but on this shape, if we assume it's a square, every side is going to be 5. So really, we could say A equals S squared, which is S times S. So the length is 5, the width is 5. So in this case, S squared equals 5 times 5, which equals 25. So we squared it. We're using our knowledge of squares. And then we got to put the units back, which is centimeters squared. Now notice here we're not squaring the 25 just the cm to the second power that is our unit in this case so area is often measured in square units and so it's important that we know squared and that we know the exponent too similarly if we are dealing with a um, let's pretend it's a cube shape um, fish tank so if we're dealing with something like this and um, we're needing to find how much water we're going to fill it in. Then there's a volume formula, which is V equals LWH. In this case, if this is a cube, we know that L is the same as W is the same as H, so we could call them all S. So in this case, V equals S cubed. So let's just pretend that each side, let's pretend that S equals 10 inches. So in this case, s cubed would equal 10 times 10 times 10, which would equal 1,000. And we can't forget the units. It would be inches cubed. So notice, now we've got a 3. Before we had a 2 when it was area. This time we have a 3. So there's lots of different real-world applications, um, but the you know measuring very large, very small distances, um, when we're dealing with areas, when we're dealing with volumes, and many, many other reasons why we need to understand this topic. Okay, so next let's take a look at some examples. So if you downloaded the, um, the template sheet that accompanies this video, you'll notice that there's a section that has um, one, two, and three written under it called examples. So Let's just do a couple of examples of questions that you might get on this. So, okay, number one. This number is written in, in factor form, so you might get a question, write this in exponential form. So your base would be two, and you've got two times itself five times, and so two to the fifth power is the answer. It's the value of the same written in exponential form. Okay, number two. You might get a question like this and be asked to write it in factor form. If that's the case, you would need to write 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's our answer for 3 to the 4th power written in factor form. Okay, number 3. 
you might get asked to write something like this in standard form. So if, it, if you had this question, you were asked to find standard form, you would, without a calculator, you would probably first write it in factor form. And then you would start multiplying. So 2 times 2 is 4. That's 4. And you go times it by another 2. So that gives you 8. And you times it by 2, which is this 2 right here, which is 16. And then don't forget you got the last 2 as well. So that gives you 32. So 2 to the fifth power equals 32. Okay, so those were some examples. So, okay, so for the question and answer section, I'm going to put a few questions up and then um, invite you to pause the video and to complete these questions. And then afterwards, we'll put the answers. So, number one, let's say five to the third power, so that's five cubed. Um, so, to write this in um, factor form, number two, write this in exponential form and number three um, could be something like this and write this in um, standard form so I'm going to invite you right now to press the pause button on your screen and then after you give these a try, press the play button and I'll start marking the answers as soon as you press play. So please press the pause button right now. Okay, so hopefully you've just paused, completed these and now you've just pressed the play button. So I'm gonna go through some answers. So we said for the first one, we are going to do um, we're going to go and do factor forms. So this is 5 times 5 times 5. So that would be your answer for this one. The second one, we wanted the answer in exponential form. Now, we've got two different bases here, and we can't mix these. So we would need to write this as 2 squared times by 3 to the third power. This is the exponential form of this question above. The very last one here, number 3, we were asked to write this in standard form. So we would need to work this out. 2 squared, that would give you 4. And then we're timesing that by 2 times 2 times 2. Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So 4 times 8 would equal 32. And so 32 is your answer. Okay, so now it's your turn. So in this section, I'm going to give um, six questions. And if you did download the template from the link that was given at the start of the video, your mission is to complete all six questions, followed by a monster question, and submit this to your teacher. Um, so here goes. This is question number one on the back of the template page. Question number one. Okay, question number one is to name the base. What is the base? And question number two is to name the exponent. Question number three is to write this number in exponential form. Question number four. Is to write this number also in exponential form. Number five is to write this number in factor form. Sorry, 
to write this number in factor form. And question number six is to write this number also in factor form. Okay, so pause the video now if you need to leave these on the screen and complete them. Otherwise, I'm about to leave you with one final monster problem. Okay, so here goes for the monster problem. This is actually question number seven. So your mission with number seven is to write this number in exponential form. To write this number in exponential form. And a little clue that I'll give you not that you might need it, you know, there's a couple of answers that would probably be acceptable, but what you can do is you can also possibly rewrite this number as 2 times 5, and you could rewrite this number as 2 times 2 times 2, and you could see if that changes anything. So that's number 7, that is the monster problem. Okay, and the very last thing that I would advise you do after completing the page template is on the back of that template at the very bottom it says information to save. So many of my students they create study cards which are basically index cards that they write notes on each and every math topic that we cover and so I'd advise you to do that to get some index cards and to try and distill one topic onto one side of the index card and then by the end of the year you'll have a very healthy collection of index study cards that you'll be able to review and um, I know that this helps people all the way through college as well. Maybe